Good evening. I'm President Richard Garassi. And on this very sad <clears throat> sad night, where we mourn uh, T, who was a good man, a good young man, with so much promise from a good family, a little child, obviously such good friends, who to me represents so much of my hope for all of you to become fine people, well-educated, who have the ability to touch other people's lives and make a big difference in the world, particularly a world so fret with not just gun violence, which is horrible enough, but deep racial discord, horrible inequalities, aching for leadership to bring us together. And you see someone like T who has all the ability to do that, and so many of you, that this loss is so deep because it's T, we lose him, and the sorrow and pain that his family has, but it represents a symbol of so much loss in the nation that's around us. So tonight is a night of deep sorrow, of loss, of anger, of friendship and love for each other, love for him and his family. We'll hear some words from Coach and Kayla and Tim, I'll close with a poem at the end. For those of you at the end of this short ceremony who would like to speak to counselors, we have all these counselors over here. Some are coaches, some are in the counseling area, religious folks, because there's a lot to digest tonight. So thank you for being here. It would mean, mean a lot to him, a lot to his family, and a lot to all of us just to be together. So thank you, and if I can call up Coach, Coach Haas, if you'd come forward and speak. All right, I uh, want to start off just by thanking everyone for being here tonight and remembering this, uh, this incredible young man. I want to thank Wagner College. I want to thank the administration. Dr. Grassi, the faculty, the staff, everyone for, for uh, setting us up and getting us here tonight. Um, I, I'm just going to read what I read for his family at, uh, at Monday's service, which if you were there, it was just an incredible show of love and support for an amazing family and an amazing young man. As we gather here tonight to celebrate T and the amazing life he lived, I want to commend his parents for raising such a respectful, hardworking, loyal, compassionate and dedicated young man. This world we live in is a scary place and certainly one that makes it difficult to raise children. As a parent myself, I hope my girls grow up and develop as people the way that T did. Tiamani, now I promise I'm not going to speak too long. See, the, the one thing I can laugh about is T used to have a way of looking at me last year in teams meet, team meetings when I get a little long-winded and say, all right, coach, that's enough. We get it. One of the few guys that could make me laugh almost all the time. So T came to Wagner in the fall of 2014 with a huge heart and a passion for the game unlike many others. He spent five years fully committed to his development, not just as a student athlete, but as a man. The greatest part of being a coach is to see the maturation of a man, and I have rarely seen the process go as perfectly as it did with Tiamani. T took advantage of everything Wagner had to offer because he was a relationship person. He had a relationship with everyone on our football team from the time he stepped on campus. Guys who hadn't played with T since 2014 reached out to me right after the news broke. I was shocked with how many different calls I got from, from guys who played from punters to kickers to offensive linemen to, to quarterbacks, and of course all the guys that played on the defensive side of the ball with Tiamani. See, football like Tiamani brings everybody together. I knew he had strong relationships with our team, but then I started to get all the texts, emails, calls from around our entire campus community. 
His laugh, his smile that touched so many during his time at Wagner. I tell our football team all the time, it's more than a game, but this game can teach you so much. The game of football and life are very similar. I want to thank Tiamani for all that he taught me. In the spring of 2018, I met with T and discussed his future here with Wagner football. We spoke about the previous four years, the good times, the bad times, the ins and outs of him in the starting lineup, all the good things he had done for our campus community, all the positivity he had spread throughout our campus. Then we started talking about life and his plans for the future, how he wanted to get his master's degree, and he wanted to set Lauren up for a future as bright as the one he had coming to him that his parents had set up for him. Started talking about how he was going to do this, and at that point, I had to make a really hard decision. I had to separate the personal from the professional. See, Tiamani had been here four years. He was going to graduate. He had done a great job, and, and he was about to move on. And I had to make a decision that was extremely difficult for me, but one that had to be made at the time. See, I love Tiamani so much, he knew that. But as a program, we were going to move forward from a scholarship standpoint. T, like he had been doing for years, took the news like a man. He thanked me for giving him the opportunity to be at Wagner and involved with the football team as long as I had. I remember sitting there shocked and amazed at what this man just said to me. I just told him he wasn't on scholarship anymore, and he looked me dead in the eye and he said, thank you. I told him again just to make sure he understood exactly what I was saying, and, it, and nothing changed. So we went through that summer into fall camp 2018, and it was a different man out there. He attacked every day, the leadership, the commitment, the positive influence he had on all our players in the program. And it just so happened by the end of camp, I was able to put him back on scholarship so that he could continue working towards his masters here at Wagner. That's who Tiamani Johnson was to us. He was a brother on the football team, but he was also a great man, a great son, and a great father. To see the love he had for Lauren the first time he introduced me, introduced me to her on the sideline was amazing. Me and him had so many discussions about daughters. I had told him from day one, it's not about you anymore, it's all about them. And from what I saw from the outside looking in, he made every decision he could to make sure she was gonna have the greatest future she could have. All I ever ask of our players is for them to understand that when they leave Wagner, it's not about them anymore, it's about their families. What kind of husbands are they gonna be? What kind of fathers are they gonna be? T had a family, and that little girl is so lucky to have his blood running through her body, she's gonna attack life like he did. She's gonna be passionate. She isn't gonna let anyone stand in her way. She's gonna brighten up the room every time she walks in. The guys in this room that played or coached T or, or anyone who's been in class with them knows that T changed lives. He will continue to change people's lives. He will be wet with Wagner football forever. Every member of this football team forever. Every, every member of this campus forever. He's looking down right now saying, Coach, please stop talking. And I'm struggling with that because I want to make sure I make every effort just like he did so I can adequately explain exactly how much T meant to me and to our program, how much he meant to everyone in this room. I want to thank him. I want to thank his parents for creating such an incredible young man who was taken way too soon. Tiamani, I want to thank you. I want, to, I want you to know as long as I'm alive, you'll always be a part of me, part of any team I'm on. So from all of Wagner football, thanks, A. You were great. Thank you. Kayla Teal is going to come up with a few more words. Hi, everyone. My name is Kayla Teal. So I'm going to be reading a poem called We Remember Him. When we are weary and in need of strength, when we are lost and sick at heart, we remember him. When we have joy, we crave to share. 
when we have decisions that are difficult to make, when we have achievements that are based on his, we remember him. At the blowing of the wind and in the chill of the winter, at the opening of the buds and in the rebirth of spring, we remember him. At the blueness of the skies and in the warmth of summer, at the rustling of the leaves and in the beauty of autumn, we remember him. At the rising of the sun and at its setting, we remember him. As long as we live, he too will live. For he is now a part of us as we remember him. Thank you. I just want to thank everybody for coming out, showing my boy love. Um, I got a message from his mom and dad. Uh, so it says, Dear Wagner family, let us begin by saying that we were overwhelmed by the amount of support and love you for brought, provided for T and our family during this very emotional time. Uh, they would like to thank you for all the emails, texts, cards, and monetary donations, and most importantly, taking the time out of your lives to come down pay respects in person at the home going celebration. Uh, it says, we were planning on driving up today, but due to bad weather, uh, family members leaving, heading back to their uh, homes, and the time of the memorial service, we won't be able to attend. We wanted to be there with all of you, but it was a pleasure and an honor having our son be a part of the Wagner family. This gesture of a memorial service to Tia Money for those who weren't able to attend a service in D.C., it's just another reason why coming to Wagner was the right decision for our family. We pray that all of you know, even though we couldn't physically be here, our hearts will forever be with you. We thank you again, and we continue to keep our, and we ask that you continue to keep our family in your prayers as we continue to pray for you. We love the Johnson family. But I just wanted to tell y'all that, you know, I met T in 2014, he was a wild dude, you know, coming to college, you with somebody you don't really, you're not really familiar with, and, you know, you're not going, you're not really sure if your first college roommate, if you, if y'all going to click, if y'all going to bond, you know, but that turned out to be one of my best friends for life. He was the coolest dude by far I ever met, and he changed my life, so I don't know, you know, Basically, what I'm trying to say is cherish the, the times y'all have with y'all friends right now in college. Just cherish it because, I mean, nobody would know that this happened right after graduation. We had plans on finishing our master's and, you know, going off and, you know, starting life, but it got took. So just cherish the time that y'all got here at this school. That's all I wanted to say. So I wanted Walt to tell you this story. We have to have a little humor that comes from T himself. And Walt heard the story at, at the funeral in Washington. And I want to capture some of the humanity of T. So. Thank you, Richard. You know, I was here and, and I recruited, I was in the recruiting process when he did come in as a freshman with coach. And Coach Fullen was the coach that recruited him. And, he got out there on the field like all the players and started competing and I, I looked over and I said, I, who's that kid with the skinny ankles? And it was, it was, it was T. And uh, I, I called him Spindles at that point. Um, he could run, he could jump, and he was a, a great, great young man. I was fortunate to know him like everybody here. And as you go through your pain right now, and they spoke about pain at the service in, in great length. And, the one thing that they talked about that was supposed to be brought from pain, and when you look up there in the pain that you had for him, if knowing him, he wants you to, to feel good, to remember all the good things about him. And that's one of the things I took away from 
from that service. It was a wonderful service. And it was about a, about a celebration of tea and how fortunate everybody there. It was a fabulous turnout. And how fortunate everybody there was to know him. He has a beautiful family. His dad, um, during the service, was not going to speak. And as he sat there and listened to all the different speakers, he got up. And he said, I wasn't going to speak, but I feel that I have to do this. He said, going back when T was a young boy, he was 10 years old, and we went on a skiing trip. And as we were learning to ski, we went down the bunny hill. And all of a sudden, the whole family's looking for T. They couldn't find T. And his father started to panic. He said, where is he? He's talking to everybody, and no one knew where T was. So we went over to the lift, which takes you up the hill, all the different hills, and he asked the young man, did you see a little man right up on the, on the cliff, on the lift? And he looked and goes, oh yeah, he just went up the lift. And he said, oh my God. And he said, what, where does that lift go? And it said to Black Diamond. So you people that know that you ski, that's the highest lift you can go to. So sure enough, as a parent, he's scrambling and he he's just doesn't know what to do. So he starts running up the hill, okay? He's running up the hill, and here comes T down the hill. Now T's on his skis, little kid, 10 years old, going down the, the, the slope, and all of a sudden he falls, and he starts tumbling down the hill. So his dad is like in a panic again. What's gonna happen? This could be a disaster. He gets over to T, and T looks up at him, and he says, are you okay, are you okay? And T looks up at him, I was okay till you started yelling and smiling, and that's when I tumbled down the rest of the hill. You know, that tells you a little bit about T and, and his personality and how he could make people smile. This is a very difficult time for everybody, and as Richard had indicated, there's counseling, and I think the one thing that it always does do, and Coach Haas was hitting, hitting on it, you know, with team members and, and you come together as a group, it gets you closer. He was a wonderful, wonderful young man and someone we'll remember forever. God bless. So, um, you know, I've lived a bit longer than some of you, or most of you, or all of you. Um, so I've seen a bit more of death, and uh, it's hard, particularly for someone this young, and some people like you to see it when you're this young, someone who's your friend, be taken so, so early in life when he was just, as Tim was saying and Kayla was saying, um, and Haas was saying, had so much going for him, was such a role model, so much going for him, to, so much he could achieve in life and give back. Um, the only thing I've ever learned to do in these situations is to try to embrace the person and keep them in your heart. So when my, my dad died way, way back when, um, he was my rock for many years as a kid. And like most kids, I got into all kinds of trouble. I just didn't, you know, I wasn't just born and put in the presidency. I had to go through all the stuff you go through. And um, when I was a high school kid, all kinds of trouble. My father stood by me. And um, he taught me to love learning. I hated school. I hated the authority of school. I went to Catholic schools. They were heavy-handed places. But he taught me to, um, to love learning, to explore, find things out. And so I eventually found myself in college and, and developed into what I did become. When my father passed away, um, I was pretty stoic about it. And the one thing I tried to do, and my advice to you, is to keep him close. I think I have a conversation with him about every day, uh, thinking of talking to him about what's happening, what's going on, thinking about what kind of advice he would give me and so on. And all I can say to all of you is, is to keep T close to you, those of you who knew him well. And he would want, from everything I've learned about him, to keep his voice in your heart as a way of being a, kind of your guardian angel on your shoulder, caring about you, looking out for you. I'm gonna read a short poem from W.H. Auden, probably one of the great American poets of the 20th century. It's called Funeral Blues. Um, and maybe we can end with this, as sad as it is. 
He wrote this about a loss in his life. Stop all the clocks, cut off the telephone, prevent the dog from barking with a juicy bone, silence the pianos and with muffled drum, bring out the coffin, let the mourners come. Let airplanes circle moaning overhead, scribbling into the sky the message, he is dead. Put crepe bows round the white hex of the public doves. Let the traffic policemen wear black cotton gloves. He was my north, my south, my east, and my west. My working week and my Sunday rest. My moon, my midnight, my talk, my song. I thought, I thought that love would last forever. I was wrong. The stars are not wanted, put out every one. Pack up the moon and dismantle the sun. Pour away the ocean and sweep up the wood, for nothing now can ever come to anything good. Auden's poem expresses a lot of the grief and loss we feel tonight. But the one thing we can do is stay together, as we've done tonight, love each other, care about him, and let his family know how much we cared about him as well. Thank you for being here tonight.